sweet like a cactus fruit on a summer's day. Hello again from on board the Royal Caribbean Symphony of the Seas. We boarded this ship in Miami a couple, well, like five days ago and are sailing across the ocean to Barcelona. It's only the second time I've done one of these transatlantic or repositioning cruises. And this kind of cruise has advantages and disadvantages. I'm gonna be making videos about that as well. I mean, obviously you have a lot of days at sea and if you're on a ship that has as many things to do as one of these Oasis class ships from Royal Caribbean, then you're not going to get bored. But, you know, I've been making YouTube videos for how many years now? And a lot of them are about cruise ships. I've lost track of how many cruises I've done exactly. And I, that's not a flex. I'm just really bad at anything that has to do with numbers. I know there's people who've done more cruises than I have. There's people who've done less cruises than I have. That's not the point. The point I'm trying to make is when you do as many cruises as I have with so many different cruise lines, it doesn't happen very often anymore that I discover something new, that there's something that I get to do or see I haven't done before, or at least uh, something, I don't know, similar to it. But it's happened to me on this cruise. And it's been the reason that I've gotten up at like 6.30 every morning so far on this cruise. And if you know, that's kind of early for a cruise. And this is a sport called pickleball. I am a very passionate club level tennis player back at home. I am on two different teams in my club and I also enter tournaments just on my own as an individual player. Germany has this like national ranking system that if you are part of a club, your club master can sign you up and then you get a ranking. And then for every tournament you enter and every player you beat, you get certain points and then you climb in the rankings. It's like pretending you're a professional tennis player. And so I love playing tennis. It's basically the only thing I do anymore since I retired from from being a musical theater performer. It's basically the only thing I do anymore that keeps me active. And one morning on this cruise, I saw that there was this pickleball happening and I thought, Pickleball? What the heck is pickleball? Okay, I have to be completely honest with you here. When I first saw what this was, I had a hard time taking it seriously. It just seemed like kind of a game you would play on the beach and not an official regulated sport. But after I played one round, I quickly realized why this is becoming one of the fastest growing sport trends. And it's not without controversy. We'll be talking about that in a minute. I was surprised to find out that it was invented back in the 60s. Yes, this sport has been around for a while, but it's only gained widespread popularity over like the past decade, I would say. According to Wikipedia, pickleball was first played in 1965. A guy named Joel Pritchard, who later became a U.S. Congress member, by the way. Unrelated fact, I know, and very rare for the very unofficial travel guides. Anyways, this Pritchard guy apparently invented the game in 1965 and named it after his dog. Fast forward to 1984, which is when the first official rule book was published, and now there are national tournaments and pickleball courts everywhere in the USA. I don't know how I didn't see this before my cruise on the symphony, but there it was. When I got home, I realized that there are even big name tennis tennis players who have either promoted the sport or played in professional tournaments. Check this out. This is Andre Agassi, Andy Roddick playing against John McEnroe and Michael Chang. What? Just a few weeks ago, Jack Sock won his first professional title in mixed doubles pickleball. So you can see it's becoming a big deal. A pickleball court is the same size as an official badminton court and can be set up on any tennis hard court and you can fit three or four pickleball courts on a tennis court if you turn them sideways. The ball is a wiffle ball, which means a hard plastic ball with holes in it. And like in ping pong, the paddles is basically like big ping pong paddles with corners. If you have any experience with tennis, squash, racquetball, or table tennis, you're going to very quickly be good at pickleball and that's one of the things that makes it so popular and addicting. There are just so many people who can play and you don't need to invest years of lessons because most athletic people already bring the kind of muscle memory with that you need to play the game. And one thing that is really great about it is there is little to no running involved so you don't have to be super fit or even super mobile in order to play the game well. 
Honestly, the most difficult thing about jumping into pickleball is learning how to announce the score. I'm really bad with anything that has to do with numbers and adding and in pickleball, you not only have to keep track of the score, but you also have to say which number player you are in the order of serve. It took me a couple days to figure it out, even though now when I think of it, it's kind of simple, but yeah, it was confusing in the beginning. There's also a two bounce no volley rule that takes a while to get used to. And then the so-called kitchen area close to the net that you can only step in if the ball bounces there. But like I said, if you're familiar with any of those other sports, it's not gonna take you too long to adjust. There are some annoying things about this sport and uh, they've actually caused some controversy that I definitely understand. One of them is the noise factor. This is the sound of pickleball. Now imagine you live next to a park or a club where this is being played all day. That definitely can get on your nerves unless you're the one playing. In fact, there have already been civil complaints filed in several cities against pickleball associations because the neighbors can't deal with the noise. And honestly, I get it. I wouldn't want to listen to this all day either. Another thing that's kind of controversial and that hits home to me is a lot of tennis courts are being turned into pickleball courts. So people who still want to play tennis have less and less opportunities opportunity to play. But all in all, I am a new fan of pickleball and will be definitely looking for it on my next cruise, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be giving up tennis anytime soon. Cut to five days later, and like I said, I've been going to every session every morning, met a really great group of people here who are into this sport, who are passionate about doing something to stay active even. I would say most of them are older than I am, and some of these people are are really hardcore pickleballers. Pickleball, just an easy way to describe it is, it's a mix of, well, it's like ping pong on a small tennis court, if that makes sense to you. If you've ever played any kind of racket sports like racquetball or squash or tennis or ping pong or paddle tennis, you're gonna be able to pick up pickleball really quickly and, and be pretty good at it quickly. Who are my pickleball players out there? Please let me know in the comments below if this is something you're into. I think this is something that's going to be on a lot of ships coming up because when you see just how popular this is and there is a session every day and the line is out and around the court of people playing. So I don't know. This is kind of a new trend. I'm into it. I hope that it doesn't take over all the tennis courts like uh, paddle tennis has in Europe. But if it gets people active, if, uh, if it's something people love to do, I guess I shouldn't hate on it that much. So yeah, I just wanna let you know, this is something, something new for me that I've uh, found on cruise ships and that I will be definitely looking for on other ships that I'll be on in the future. And I uh, just wanted to know how many of you out there are pickleballers. I'm Morgan from the Very Unofficial Travel Guides. Thanks for checking out this video. By the way, if you like hearing stories about things going right and horribly wrong while traveling, I also wrote a book called Getting Stitches on a Cruise Ship. It's available on Amazon now. It's not only a way that you can get a fun little thing to read while you're cruising, while you're waiting for your pickleball tournament or whatever you're doing, but it's also a nice way that you can give me a little bit of extra support and show me some love. So check out Getting Stitches on a Cruise Ship, available on Amazon now. And that being said, I'm heading over, gonna get in the back of the line and play some pickleball. See you soon.